What's up guys? Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Lords of the Fallen as it has got a lot of attention in the last few days since its launch about how unoptimized it is. Well, some people are saying it's unoptimized, some people are saying it's extremely scalable. And uh, I have been studying this game uh, for hours today, watching uh, multiple people play this game and test it online. I don't actually own the game, I, I'm not going to buy it because it's just not a game that I'm interested in playing. But it's one of the first uh, big titles, it's actually the second big title. The first uh, one was Immortals of Avium and now we have Lords of the Fallen. Uh, that use Unreal Engine 5 and it also uses two of the main technologies in Unreal Engine 5 which are Nanite and Lumen and they are supposed to be extremely easy for developers to implement and all this stuff but they're actually very taxing on our PC hardware. We're going to talk about what they are, what differences they're actually making and is this game actually unoptimized or is it extremely scalable? Which one is it? Is it somewhere in between? Probably a little bit of both but we're going to get into all that guys. Before we get started, if there's anyone who's not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. We appreciate each and every one of y'all so much. So without further to talk about here, let's get started. Okay guys, so this article here comes from darksideofgaming.com and one quick note I will make before we get started. One of the charts we're going to be looking at has NVIDIA DLSS3 frame generation on and it's enabled and they have a chart using that showing performance with DLSS3. That has since been or hopefully temporarily removed from the game. They, uh, the developers thought that was what was causing the crashes or that was what was to be believed anyway. So they have temporarily disabled DLSS3 and a hotfix or one of the recent small patches for this game. So if you go to play the game right now, it does not have DLSS3 in it. I have looked at a lot of performance uh, today since that DLSS3 has been removed. So we're going to talk about that now, guys. Um, Lords of the Frolin on ultra settings at 4K native on a RTX 4090 and a very high-end hardware such as a 7950X 3D or 13900K, the CPU doesn't matter in that scenario, um, is getting about 48 to 50 frames per second. Now, I know that seems extremely low, and that is very low, and, and a lot of people, the 4090 was just so good when it came out, a lot of people, I guess, you know, we had got tricked into thinking, hey, this, game, this graphics card is just gonna run through everything. Uh, for many years to come. Well, if we want to go back to the past just a little bit, guys, these big games always come out a year or two after our graphics card comes out, and it's it's almost like you can't fully play the game on max settings until two or three years later, until the next generation uh, of GPUs come out, kind of like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Cyberpunk and so many other games, The Witcher 3, you know, I can go on and on. But anyway, um, one of the big things is it got a lot of flat for that 4K native performance on the 4090. And while I don't always agree with this, guys, uh, NVIDIA DLSS is here, and I, I feel like a lot of developers are partially it, it, finishing developing the game with DLSS and FSR on because they're depending on them technologies a little too much. Now, there's almost no reason not to use DLSS uh, on quality mode. It is very good, especially at 4K resolution. Your internal render resolution is 1440p and you usually get great performance out of it. Sometimes a little bit better than native, sometimes a little worse than native. It just all depends on motion, uh, steel shots, what you're looking at. But anyway, guys, we're gonna come down here. That, uh, like I said, they tested this on a 7950X 3D, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 6,000 megahertz and a RTX 4090. So if we come down here, at native 4K ultra settings, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 uh, cannot come close to a 60 FPS experience. Yeah, we already talked about that there. So what they got here at native resolution is an average frame rate of 48 frames a second. Now, I've watched a lot of gameplay from other people online, and I've actually seen uh, anywhere in the very high 40s to sometimes up in the mid 50s. It just all depends on where at in the game they're recording the gameplay. Now, at DLSS, they got this label DLSS 3 Super Resolution. That's just DLSS 2.3 or whatever version is in the game. And they got that, they got that label wrong. So they got 79 frames per second. And then we'll, with DLSS 3 frame generation, they got 113 frames per second. Now, that is a big improvement. 
And unfortunately, like I said, we can't use frame gen right now in this game or anybody who's actually playing the game cannot use frame gen because it has been temporarily disabled. Now, the good news is this game does seem to be extremely scalable. And what that means is um, this game, even on low settings, looks extremely well. And it, it looks as, as good as some games does on ultra settings. We're going to look at some screenshots here in just a minute that demonstrate that, um, comparing it to Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, um, on low settings, the RTX 4090 at 4K resolution got 89 frames per second. Again, the gameplay that I've been watching seems to all be a little higher than these numbers on this website, but they are, they do all end up pretty close. Uh, compared to ultra settings, at 48 frames a second to low at 89 frames a second. Again, that is at 4K native resolution. Um, and also, I've watched Daniel Owen play this game a lot today, guys, and he tested he tested it on the low end hardware. I love watching him do that. A lot of times, he'll test on low end GPUs. And if we click over here for just a second to the minimum requirements, he played on a CPU uh, just a tick newer than this. It was like a, uh, I believe, an Intel Core i5 9400 or 9600, and he also played with a. GTX 1060 and what he got was he got 30 around 32 or 32 for 32 or 33 frames a second at native 1080p but what the game actually does when you leave it on auto settings when using a GTX 1060 it will default to using the Unreal Engine 5 built-in upscaler and it 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 renders the that uses an internal render resolution of 540p and upscales the game to 1080p and so you do have somewhat of a pixelated image but you are getting 60 frames a second on a GPU that is now seven years old over seven and a half years old if I'm not mistaken it was released in the summer of 2016 so yeah that would be uh, seven and a half years old so to, in my opinion that is very good scalability now um, there is some problems with the game for one, uh, we got it seems to be have pretty bad texture pop in when you're going in and out of cutscenes. Even with the absolute best hardware money can buy, such as the RTX 4090, you still get texture pop in. I've watched it multiple times today. I watched it with Bang for Buck PC Gamer, and I also watched a lot of Daniel Owens videos. I wanted to get a full grasp of what was going on in this specific game before I made the video about it, guys. But uh, let's let's come right here and look at these screenshots right here. Right here, this is Lords of the Fallen at 4K low settings with ultra textures. It does have ultra textures enabled, but everything else is set to low settings in the game at 4K ultra. All right, and we're going to click on both of these screenshots right here, guys. If you see, there's still so much detail in this game, and, and uh, the lighting and everything to, to be low settings looks absolutely amazing. Uh, on low settings. Now we're gonna come. We're gonna come right over here and look at one more. This one again uh, looks amazing on low settings. And then we're gonna click over and we're gonna go to Assassin's Creed Mirage. This is Assassin's Creed Mirage at 4K Ultra settings. Uh, to me, both of them other I images look just as good, if not better. I do agree with this website, Dark Side of Gaming, on that. I actually think they look a little better. And so that's what I mean uh, with extreme scalability. Um, it, I know, including myself, with I have a 4090, and I want to just crank everything to the max. That's what we buy high-end hardware for. But uh, sometimes if you just turn things down to high uh, and use DLSS, you, you could get excellent performance even with this game. Let's just see at, at high, they got 71 frames per second. Uh, with DLSS on, uh, without frame gem, that's probably gonna be about 90 to 100 frames a second and uh, graphics are going to look absolutely excellent. So that's that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say scalable. Um, one thing I want to go back and explain, guys, since we've talked about some performance numbers here, is we're going to talk about uh, Nanite and Lumen. And I have a web page pulled up we're about to look at to uh, talk about that right here. Okay, guys, so like I was saying, Nanite and Lumen are two of Unreal Engine 5's flagship features. And they are both featured uh, in Lords of the Fallen. Now, Lumen is a software-based ray-traced global illumination system. Now, I am not too big of a fan of Lumen, not because it doesn't look good or anything like that. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. But the thing about it is ray-traced global illumination uh, that I've seen in some of the games that's launched in the past year, year and a half, have been absolutely breathtaking. And um, 
Two games that come to mind are Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and Dying Light 2. Um, I, I know when Dying Light 2 launched, I have that game, and just the RTX on and off on the ray traced global illumination makes the entire game look like a brand new video game. It turns, it, it looks like the difference between a video game and a real life scene. Um, that's what ray traced global illumination can do. Now. Lumen has the ability to be hardware accelerated. So it can be a software based, a software ray traced global illumination system that is accelerated by hardware RT cores or hardware ray accelerators in the case of AMD or hardware ray tracing cores or whatever Intel calls them, their Z cores. Um, so with that being said, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but I, I kind of feel like we're Using Lumen maybe in some cases is kind of like going backwards. I don't ex understand exactly why they would use it. Um, and I, I know a lot of people may drop comments and have their opinions about it, and that's great. A lot of people say that it's easier to implement, but from what we've seen so far, it is extremely taxing on hardware. The Unreal Engine 5 does seem to be pretty taxing, even though this game that we just looked at is extremely scalable, and I am very happy to see how scalable it is. It can still be played on a lot of different hardware, but they definitely have some quirks and stuff they need to work out of it. Now, uh, the Nanite is a virtualized micro polygon geometry system. Now, uh, that is a whole lot harder to explain. I'm not going to try to go into 100,000 details on that, but basically what that does, when you're looking at level of detail in a game, it, enable, it enables game developers to easily, not, not more easily on the hardware necessarily, but more easily in the game to give you more rapid detail, uh, even in further away scene. So something that you would be looking at that was, I don't know, a few hundred yards away or a hundred yards away or 50 yards away as the detail gets less and less, as you get less and less detail the further away uh, your player is in the game from whatever you're looking at, this Nanite has the ability to uh, enhance so many more polygons on the screen and that's a lot of what you're seeing in Lords of the Fallen when you're looking at the ground, when you're looking at textures, when you, it's just so much detail, even a pretty decent way in the distance. Um, I, like I said, I'm not a graphics engineer and when it comes to Nanite, it's, it's just way too deep for me to try to explain uh, everything about it because God knows I don't even know everything about it. But um, it does seem a lot more like a cooler technology. I am uh, a lot more excited about the Nanite than I am the Lumen. Mostly because the Lumen, you know, I feel like we already have a better solution, and that is full hardware, hardware-based uh, ray-traced uh, global illumination. With that being said, guys, uh, before we end this video, I will say that I do think that game is pretty scalable. Uh, it does have a lot of quirks that need to be worked out, uh, such as all the texture pop in, and no matter even if you're playing on an RTX 4090, when you go into a cutscene, it takes like two or three seconds for the uh, the high res textures to pop in. That's unacceptable playing on a PCs that cost three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. No matter how good your hardware is, uh, the people that I watched today had the absolute best graphics cards and CPUs, and they were still having that problem. So that that comes with uh, a lot of these games are not fully optimized. They are trying to rush them out the door. They're trying to hit timelines and crunch times that they just should not hit. And uh, that is disappointing. The whole PC community has been upset about that. But, you know, that's a whole story for another day. But anyway, guys, I hope most of you have enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed uh, talking about this game and going over this stuff with y'all. Like I said, guys, I do think this game is extremely scalable, even though it might not look like it when you crank everything to the max using the RTX 4090. And don't get me wrong, performance definitely could be better. But um, one thing I will say before I end the video, depending on where you're at in the game, when I was watching Daniel Owen play the game earlier, he went from about 52 frames per second at 4K native and just turning on DLSS 2, depending on if there was a lot of uh, lords or players or, or different enemies around, he, he gained all the way from 52, anywhere from 82 to 100 FPS. So that is gaining from like 60 to 100 FPS by using DLSS 2 and that was at quality mode. So. Even though the game seems extremely taxing at native resolution, that is a huge relief to see it perform that well uh, with DLSS quality mode. And 
that's one of the reasons that shows you that there is a lot of scalability left in this game even if we don't see it at native resolution guys thank each and every one of y'all for watching this video if there's anyone that's not subscribed please hit that subscribe button drop a like comment do all that good youtube stuff we appreciate each and every one of y'all so much and we will see y'all soon